Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kerry and today we are going to be talking about all of the products that I have been loving this year. Now that is not necessarily that they have been released this year, it's just what I have reached for over and over again this year. Just some of my favourites. I'm excited to share them with you, talk about them. You might be able to guess them if you've been around on my channel for a little while. So if that's something of interest to you, please stick around and don't forget to subscribe. This part of the video is sponsored by Dialect Fragrances. I really love their fragrance brand. It is an amazing brand based in the UK and what they do is basically create gorgeous eau de parfums for a fraction of the cost of some of the really big names on the market. And a lot of their scents are based on those big names, but without the high markup, without the really expensive packaging, and they are eco-friendly, they are PETA certified, cruelty-free, all of that jazz. And look at the packaging. It would help if I was holding it the right way, but super cute, stylish, minimalist, simple packaging. And that is why you're not paying a lot of money for these fragrances. Now, these are the two that I've had in my collection for a little while now. And as you can see, I've used this one a lot. This one is the Vibrant Woods, absolutely gorgeous. And I have Aromatic Sage Woods. So these are the two that I've had for a little while, but the three that have just been gifted to me by Dialect, I am so excited because I have Amber Infusion and I had a sample of this the last time that I got the other two fragrances and this smells so amazing. Now this is based on the Baccarat Rouge, not sure if I'm saying that right, 540. Now that is a very expensive fragrance. So I've not actually smelled that before, but when I smelt Amber Infusion, I was like, wow, this is a fragrance for me. It's got Jasmine Saffron, Amber Woods and Amber Gris. I don't know, but I love that they come with these little cards that tell you the notes in them and the fragrance that it is based on. But of course, you're not paying the hefty price tag because it's in such nice, simple packaging. I've also got Honey Temptation. Now I really wanted to try this one because this is inspired by Lady Million. And I've had that perfume, I've used it all up. I absolutely loved it. So I really wanted to try this one. I haven't actually smelled it yet. I'm gonna smell it with you. But it's got raspberry, jasmine, orange blossom, and honey. So like I say, I have tried Lady Million before, used it all up, absolutely loved it. So let's give this one a go. Oh, yeah. Okay, that is a very familiar scent and it is absolutely beautiful. Okay, yeah, I would say this was definitely based on Lady Million, but of course it is a lot cheaper because you are getting the simplistic packaging and you're not paying for the high markups for all of that. And the third one that I chose this time was the Salted Vanilla. So the Salted Vanilla is based on Olympia. Again, one of my absolute favorite perfumes. I've had it two or three times, used all of it up because it is so amazing. So this is Jasmine Vanilla Salt and this one that I can't pronounce again, Ambergris. I... I don't know, but we're gonna give it a spritz because I haven't smelled this yet and see. Yes, yes. Okay, that smells incredible and it does definitely smell a little bit like Olympia and I am over the moon to have these in my perfume stash because I love fragrances. I do begrudge paying the hefty price tag. So I can't believe I've actually come across a brand that does the same similar scents based on, not exact dupes of, but the Eau de Parfums and they're affordable. Now I don't just like florally feminine scents, I do also like more masculine scents and more unisex scents, which is why I did pick up the first time Vibrant Woods and Aromatic Sagewood. These were gifted to me from Dialect as well. And this was from the first sponsorship I did with them and I was blown away, like, <sighs> I can't tell you how impressed I am with this brand. The only thing I would suggest for the brand for the future, it would be really nice to see the sample sizes in like a pack. Maybe you could have five or six of the fragrances in a sample size, slightly bigger than the sample size that comes with it. So in both of my packages that I've received from Dialect, I have had a little sample that's this size. If they were bigger than this and there was five or six fragrances and you could purchase that and just test them out, I feel like that would be amazing and very, very giftable. And then you could sort of see a, you know, get a little bit of a feel for the brand and see what the fragrances are like. But I have to say, I really do enjoy these fragrances. I am so, so happy that Dialect reached out to me again and wanted to work with me and send me some more lovely fragrances. And all I can say to you guys is if you love fragrances, please do check them out. I do have an affiliated code if that's something you're interested in. Saving some pennies, having a little look on their website. 
They do come in packaging like this, which is super cute, all recyclable, which I really, really like. And like I say, you do get the little cards that explain the notes in the fragrances, which I find really handy and helpful because I, I don't know about these notes and things like, I can't even pronounce half of them, but I do think it's a super cute little touch and very, very giftable and they are a certified carbon neutral brand. I just think all in all, everything that I've discovered about Dialect so far, I've been really impressed with. So yeah, feel free to check them out and thank you to Dialect for sponsoring this part of the video and gifting me these fragrances. Okay, so moving on to my absolute favourite products that I've been reaching for time and time again this year. I'm going to try and do as many categories as I can. Am I probably going to forget one or two categories? I mean, it's quite likely, but we're going to dive into it. Okay, we're gonna start out with setting powder. And I discovered this this year. This has been around for a real long time. It hasn't released this year, but I have actually come across it and discovered it. And this is the NYX HD Finishing Powder. It's the banana one and it's a pressed powder and it is very affordable from NYX. I got this one on Beauty Bay. I can sort of see a little bit of the indentation of pan coming through. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but I can see a little circle of where I'm gonna be hitting pan very very soon. I don't hit pan on things that often, like it is a rarity. So I haven't even had this for that long but I reach for it all the time. It's a lot quicker and easier than using a loose setting powder a lot of the time. I don't feel like it makes me look like I'm aging dramatically. Like I struggle with that. It's really difficult for me to find a really good powder. So to actually find one that I can use on my under eyes, very sparingly, I will say, but all over the face, this one is incredible. Can't recommend this one enough. I've really been enjoying it. And yeah, I'm gonna be hitting pan soon and I can see myself definitely repurchasing this one. I will link all of these things down below in the description box if you are interested. Okay, we're gonna move on to primer and I do have fairly dry skin. I do try and stay on top of it a lot of the time with my skincare. I am quite good at trying to stick to my skincare routine. So it is on the drier side, but it's not crazy dry. And the primer that I've been loving, and um, it's been for a long, long while now, is the NYX Marshmallow Primer. If I know I'm gonna be wearing a foundation all day and I need to be out of the house and it has to be very long lasting, this is the one that I use underneath. All of the foundations that I like sit very nicely on top of this one. So if you do have dry skin, maybe you would be interested in this. Again, another NYX product, that's interesting. I don't have a lot of NYX, but now thinking about it, that powder and this primer, really nice. Okay, moving on to foundation. My all time favorite ultimate foundation in the entire world that cannot be beaten is the NARS Soft Matte. I know, I've got dry skin, I know what you're thinking, but because it's a soft matte and not a matte matte, I think this sits on my skin beautifully. It doesn't really dig into my fine lines and stand out crazily, it is beautiful the way it applies, the way it lasts all day, it doesn't make me look extra dry, it just looks incredible. Now I do get this in the shade, Mont Blanc, which is light too. And I have to say, this is, is my all time favorite. I do, however, though, keep it in the packaging just because it's a little bit messy. And if I store it this way up, rather than the other way up, when I unscrew it, it is a little bit less messy because it can sort of volcano out a bit and get everywhere. And I didn't want to waste any of this precious product. It's not the cheapest foundation. It's not the most expensive, but yeah, I do store it in the box. That's a little tip if you've got this one just so that there isn't an explosion when I come to open it and I'm wasting product. But this product, absolute favorite hands down. It's gonna take some beating. I wonder if I'm gonna find a foundation that I prefer more than this next year. Like, I can't see it happening. One that I find very, very similar to the NARS Soft Matte, but is a lot cheaper. Now, don't get me wrong, it is not the exact same by any means. However, it is really, really good and it is the W7 HD foundation like I've used quite a lot of this now I don't know if I'm down to here and I didn't even get it that long ago and I've got this in sand beige yeah W7 wow this is the first W7 foundation that I've tried I think and I'm not disappointed I would definitely I'm sorry that the cap's so messy I would definitely repurchase this foundation I find it is similar to the NARS soft matte so if that's something that you like you might like this one but obviously it's a lot cheaper so if I'm going to be filming and I want a really nice base like today I am wearing this I know that if I have to come to wash it off in a couple of hours I'm not wasting my NARS this is around is this like five or six pounds, like I will have everything linked down below, but this is another amazing alternative for me and it's something I reach for time and time again. Okay, we're moving on to concealers now and I have two favorites. So 
probably my ultimate favourite under eye concealer because I don't tend to conceal other areas. I don't do a like much on the nose or forehead or chin. That's very rare if I do that. So I'm basing this on the under eye experience. I I'm building this up to sound better than it is, aren't I? This is the Makeup Revolution Eye Bright Illuminating Under Eye Concealer and I have this in Fair and it does have vitamin C. Look, I, I don't think the packaging's the best in the world. I'd have much preferred a normal one, but I absolutely love this for my under eye. Now I have very creasy under eyes, okay? Like seriously creasy and it can go real wrong real quick and I can't have a thick cakey layer on my under eye of concealer. It has to be a light, light consistency. Otherwise, I'm not leaving the house like that or I'm gonna have a ridiculously dramatic lower lash line when I come to do my eyeshadow just to cover up what is going on under there. But this concealer is fantastic. I think I actually need to buy some more. I think, I don't know if you can see in the little window how much I've got left of this. Like, I love this product. This is so good for a makeup revolution. I would definitely repurchase this and it does sit really nicely on my under eyes. And another one that's a bit of a shocker and it was a bit of a grower because I didn't really know what to think of it when I first tried this concealer. But the more I've used it, the more I realise I actually really like it. And it does a similar job to the makeup revolution, but maybe a little bit more coverage. And this is what I'm wearing today, actually. This is the Be Perfect Cosmetics Chroma Cover Concealer. And this is in, what is this in? W1. This is really good on my under eyes. I was quite surprised because I'm thinking, oh, it is a little bit more full coverage. It might get a little bit more cakey, a bit more build up -y. No, this is also really good. I don't use loads of concealer on my under eyes. The more minimal the product, the better because the more I'm packing it on, the more it's gonna be cakey and sitting in my creases. So a little bit of this, and I think it's fab. And I don't actually need to set either of these. If I leave them alone, they will be fine. If I set them, they might look a little, little bit more crepey, but I can put these on without setting them and they're beautiful. Okay, we're well moving on to eyeshadow primer and I have two that I'm gonna recommend. One, slightly more expensive than the other. And I just wanna say I have slightly dry eyelids. Like a lot of people suffer with really oily lids that break up product, break up eyeshadow. And yeah, mine is not like that. Although they are slightly hooded, I have on the whole dry eyelids. So I can't wear MAC Paint Pot. If that's one of your favorites, just ignore these primers because I can't have it too drying it it will look ridiculous and crocodile-like if I pick a really drying primer. So the eye primers that I really like are the Natasha Denona eyeshadow primer. This is in 01 Light Beige. I really like this as an eyeshadow primer. I think ones with coverage are my favorite. I don't like it if it's a transparent wash of primer. I like something that covers, that sort of covers my skin tone and covers everything up and it's a nice blank canvas before I go in with eyeshadow. I find this one really good. It's not the cheapest, it's a little bit more on the expensive side. So it depends on your budget and what you're thinking, but I really enjoy that one. And then the other one I really enjoy is the P. Louise Base in Rumour 01. This is a little bit more drying, but it's not too drying on my lids. It's not like the MAC Paint Pot. And I love using this for a cut crease. This is super good and I enjoy it. And I'm surprised that there's still some left in this tube, to be honest. I'm gonna keep going with it before I repurchase another, but I would definitely repurchase. Okay, when it comes to eyebrows, the little skinny pencils that you can draw, like I do have one, let me show you it. Currently I've been using the Makeup Revolution pencil. This is a real precise one. I think it's around four pounds. You do have the skinny precise pencil on one side and you do have the spoolie on the other side. Do I really recommend this specific product? I mean, yeah, it's okay, but any skinny pencil like this, I absolutely love. This one is quite a nice one. I do get mine. What shade is this in? I don't know if it's my perfect shade, but I got this in medium brown and I do like working with it. But any sort of little precise pencil like this, I think is fab and this doesn't tug. It goes on nicely. But my absolute favorite product that I have discovered this year is the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. And I get mine in brunette. Again, don't know if it's the perfect shade for me, I was just trying it out, but this is so precise. So precise you can create really, really thin lines that look like hair strokes. It is beautiful. It is like this on the end. It is super, super fine. It is pigmented. I've had this for quite a few weeks now and it hasn't dried up. It seems to be really good. You can shake it and it's got like a little ball bearing or something in it to make sure that the product 
is going to the tip, but I absolutely love this product. Okay, for lashes, I'm gonna go with a brand rather than a specific pair of lashes. On the whole, I have enjoyed half lashes this year, but I like to cut any lashes down to make half lashes, so I don't need to specifically buy half lashes, if you know what I mean. But I discovered Pound Lashes, and they were kind enough to give me an affiliated code, so that will be in the description box if you're interested in picking anything up, but they are so affordable. I do not like spending money on lashes. I begrudge spending money on lashes. Eyeshadow, absolutely all day long. Lip products, foundations. Eyelashes are just not one of those things I like to spend a lot of money on and I have bought all of these lashes myself but this is the lash book that I picked up for Christmas. It's got all the Christmas style in it from Pound Lashes and I think it's absolutely fantastic. I am wearing one of the sh shades. They're not shades. I'm wearing one of the styles today called Frosty and I just really enjoy them as a whole. I haven't tried the rest of this book out yet but I like the styles and the looks that, that, ha the, the, that they have in there. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I started out just buying single pairs of lashes and I've used them time and time again and I've worn them quite a lot considering they're on the affordable side I've got a lot of use out of these lashes so the ones that I did pick up does it tell me 4d empower and I also have what are these called 4d euphoria I think I have a couple of other pairs as well but generally whatever style that you want I think pound lashes are affordable really really good quality for the price and I've had absolutely no issues with them so really like them as a brand I don't mind paying a pound or so for a pair of lashes eyeliners for the waterline it has to be the Beauty Bay eyeshadow sticks they are extremely affordable because they are on offer 99% of the time that I check on Beauty Bay these are limited edition I'm not sure how long they're gonna hang around for well, these are amazing they are affordable they are disney you have six yes i can count six different shades in this i feel like they are pigmented on the waterline they last a really long time on me you don't just have to use them for the waterline but i mean i do they are on the bigger chunkier side when you open them but like i say absolutely perfect for my waterline there is no issues whatsoever this is the orange one i just feel like they are really long wearing they last really well and i like the color selection and i feel like you have got more sort of pastel tones which you don't often get and they're not often as pigmented in the waterline so I would really recommend these I use them all the flipping time we're gonna move on to highlighter now I vary my highlighters there are so many that I love I do have a highlighter collection and slight declutter video if you're interested in seeing that that was up not long ago on my channel but the one that I keep reaching for again and again and again especially over the past month or so I can't put it down and I haven't done this with the highlighter all year apart from with this one. This is the Makeup Revolution and Beetlejuice handbook for the recently deceased highlighter palette. I literally can't stop using this. It's, it's actually becoming a problem. I need to actually stop myself and reach for other things in my collection. But the three shades that are included in this are gorgeous. I feel like it does cater for various skin tones, maybe not all, but I think it's beautiful. There's only one that I wouldn't be able to get away with and that is the top one. I like using the bottom one, especially when I have fake tan on and the middle one is beautiful as well. The formula is beautiful. I do feel like Makeup Revolution know what they are doing when it comes to highlighters. And the fact that this is Beetlejuice, it looks like the handbook. But seriously, this shade, this is the one I cannot stop reaching for. Okay, we're gonna talk about lash glue and I don't want any judgment of how my lash glue tube looks because this is not my fault, this is a design flaw. This is the Velour Lash Glue and yes, mine looks disgusting. And it doesn't matter how many times I clean it up, I do think there is a problem with the packaging of this. You have to kind of wipe it every single time otherwise this is, this is what's happening, which is a bit of a shame because Everything else about this product I love, maybe not the price. I do believe it's around 11, 12 pounds, which is expensive for a lash glue. I do begrudge paying that for a lash glue. However, you don't have to wait as long with this lash glue to apply your lashes as you do. For example, I used to use the Duo Lash Glue, the green one. You do have to wait a little bit of time so that that gets tacky. This one, not so much. You can more or less stick them on straight away. It's long lasting, it's fantastic. Apart from, like I say, the packaging design. This is what it looks like on the inside. And I really do need to clean mine up because it is looking super grotty. Okay, now we're moving on to bronzer. I'm going to start with cream bronzer because this product is so good. It is, it shocked me how good this product is. I am wearing it today. I use it a lot in my makeup routine. This is the Makeup Revolution Cream Bronzer and I've got it in the shade Light. It's the Ultra Cream Bronzer. 
this is so affordable for the formula you are getting. I think I am actually almost about to hit pan on this. I would repurchase this in a heartbeat. It is so, so good. Blendable, not too pigmented. It's buildable. It smells delicious. It smells a little bit like sweets. Yeah, it definitely smells a little bit like sweets. It is absolutely stunning. The packaging is on the cheaper side. It is more affordable to buy, but the product that you are getting, 10 out of 10 for cream bronzer. I can't recommend this enough. They are on the cooler side, all of the tones. They're not as warm and orangey. So if that's something that you're interested in, maybe try a different brand, but I haven't found a formula that's this good in cream bronzer. So although it's on the cooler side, I actually like that. I prefer that I don't wanna look too warm, too orangey. Nobody wants to look like a what's it. This is beautiful. And then for powder bronzer, I have the Ofra Duo Bronzer in River. This was the Samantha March collab. Like you can tell how much I've used this. The packaging is a little bit dirty. I'm not sure if, how well that you're seeing that, but I have hit pan on this. I don't hit pan on things. Look at this. I just feel like the shade is absolutely perfect for me. Like I can build it up a lot more when I've got fake tan on and when I haven't, I can just go in with a bit of a lighter hand. One side is matte, one side is shimmery. I just swirl my brush around. I use both sides. I love this product. I do hope you can still get hold of this product. I believe it's still on Beauty Bay because I will be repurchasing this. This is my favorite bronzer, hands down for powder. Okay, then we're on to blush. And for cream blush, I'm gonna go with the Melt Cream Blush Light in Cali Dream. Such a good formula and this shade's, okay, don't judge me. This looks a little bit gross inside. Look, cream products, I can't help it. But this shade is gorgeous. It's kind of an orangey, corally color. It is so, so nice. The formula, the texture, you can build it up. It's, it's just pigmented enough. Really, really good quality. I need to stop blabbering on about each individual product because we're gonna be here all day and then it's gonna be three hours long, just like my palette collection video. And then for blush, obviously it's gonna be an orange blush. I hope you're aware of this. This is the Odin's Eye blush. They came out with these this year. It was this year, wasn't it? Was it last year? No, it was this year. It was definitely this year. I love the blushes and highlights from Odin's Eye, the ones that they brought out in the Soul Main 2 collection. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, I do apologize. This is in Peach Gleam and it is, I can't get into it. It is so, so beautiful. It's a lovely orangey shade, but it does have a little bit of gleam in it since it's peach gleam. There is a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of shimmer. It's not too crazy when you're applying it. It is just beautiful. It's not fully matte though, because it does have that little bit of sparkle, but I absolutely love this as a blush and I've been reaching for it again and again and again. Now we are on to mascara. I constantly use the same mascara and it is literally the Sky High Mascara from Maybelline. And this one is in Cosmic Black. I don't discriminate, I love this one and the original. This is one of the best mascaras I have ever tried. It is extremely lengthening. I wouldn't say it was particularly volumizing, but the wand is why I like this so much. It is a flexible wand that is on the smaller side, which I really enjoy, especially for the lower lash line. But like I say, extremely lengthening. It's not so much volumizing, that's not what you're gonna be getting with this one, but that is not what I want it for. I wanted the length, it's separating. It is absolutely beautiful and it is a drugstore mascara. Um, I do still kind of begrudge spending money on mascaras. I think this is around 10 pound. Like I say, everything will be linked down below, but this is the one I use constantly. And when this runs out, you betcha I'm gonna be getting another one. Okay, we need to talk about lip products and the lip liner that I continuously use because let's be honest, a lot of us need a nice neutral lip liner, but they have so many other shades that are so affordable as well. MUA Lip Liner in TLC. I don't know how many times I've said that this year because that is always the one that I seem to be reaching for. It is a lovely nude shade and they're extremely long when you first buy them. Like obviously I've sharpened mine down, but you get so much product, especially for the price. This is the TLC shade. I can't recommend these enough. I want every single color in this product because it's so affordable, pigmented, goes on beautifully. You can't go wrong with this lip liner. Okay, probably my favorite or one of my favorite lip formulas is definitely the Kaleidos, what are they called? Lip clays? I feel like it's cloud something as well. This is just one example of one of the tins that I've got. I do have two other tins in my makeup collection as well. This is just to show you, but 
This is what they look like. The packaging is super soft and matte. You don't have to buy these in a tin. You can buy these separately on the Kaleidos website. I love these. These are like, they, they aren't transfer proof, but they are so soft and they are like a soft matte on the lips. They will fill in any lines that you've got. It's blurring. It's just beautiful. I absolutely love this formula. I, I don't really know how to describe it to you. I feel like if you've tried them, you know, like if you know, you know, but they are so, so comfortable on the lips. They are highly pigmented. They are a beautiful formula. So yeah, anytime that Kaleidos come out with some more of these and they have just said that they're gonna be launching two more of these tins, my ears perk up because I'm like, oh, do I need some more shades? Because that is an amazing formula. My favorite setting spray of the year. Let me tell you, it's Makeup Revolution. I never thought that was gonna be the case because every time I've tried a Makeup Revolution setting spray, the mister on it has literally spat on me at full force and I usually hate them. However, I picked up this one, like the writing's rubbed off. That's how long I've had it now. I refuse to throw it out even though it's got the tiniest bit left in it. I think it's called the Coconut Restore Fixing Spray. Yeah, it's the Rehab. It's got Ceramide and Coconut Fixing Spray. Set and Refresh the Skin. It's got one of those shaker my bobs in it. It smells like coconut, which is my absolute favorite scent. And the mister on this is one of the best that I have tried. I can't even tell you how beautiful this mister is. I would really recommend this. I think this is around eight pounds and it is amazing. I really need to repurchase another one instead of keeping this one that has got the tiniest bit of product left. But yeah, absolutely amazing mister, amazing scent. If you like coconut, it's not too in your face, <laughs> in your face, because it's a setting spray. Oh dear. I go through tons of this product. This is the IsoClean brush cleaner. I am too lazy to stand at the sink and wash my brushes a lot of the time, like, and do a proper deep clean. So spot cleaning or just cleaning a lot of the brushes that I've got, like, I use a lot of bright, vivid colours, pigmented shadows. This brush cleaner is fantastic. Now, it does smell. I haven't tried the Cinema Secrets one, but this one is extremely strong smelling of alcohol. So open a window if you're gonna be using it, but I do have the spray version. I also have the pouring version with the little pot so you can dip your brushes in. This is amazing. It does definitely clean your brushes, sanitize them, and it dries within seconds. You're not leaving all your brushes out waiting for them to dry, which is so irritating. And then you've got to shape them beautifully. And no, this is an amazing product, but yeah. Open a window, it's not the cheapest, try and get it on offer. I always wait until there's an offer somewhere. I mean, I think there's some on TikTok, on the shop, and also Isoclean do Black Friday deals. They don't have the best customer service, so just be a little bit careful if you are buying off the Isoclean website, but I love this product. Then we're gonna move on to the two eyeshadow palettes that I have constantly reached for again and again and again. I haven't had these, one of them specifically, as long in my collection as the other. But I haven't felt like this about two palettes for a real long time because I generally review an eyeshadow palette, I'll come back to it once or twice, then it kind of sometimes gets lost a little bit in my collection, which is a little bit sad, especially when I'm constantly reviewing new things. That's just the life of a YouTuber in general, unless you are a channel that specifically only goes and looks at the older things. I love reviewing new products. So, the two palettes that I constantly want to play with and reach for, regardless of what new things are coming in my collection. The first one is the Glam Light Barbie palette. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know I really don't like Glam Light customer service. I think that it is very, very poor. However, the quality of this eyeshadow and this palette is extremely good. I, it, like, it's undeniable. And if you like this colour story, I don't feel like you'd be disappointed. It does have more putty-like shimmers in this. And like I say, I have done a top 10 palettes of the year video if you wanna check that out. Here are a little bit deeper thoughts into why I like the palettes I like for this year, but this color story, the pigmentation, everything about this palette draws me in and I just wanna keep picking it up and playing with it. Let me know, have you got this palette and do you feel the same? And then of course the other palette is the Cosmic Brushes Serenity palette. I cannot put this palette down. I literally wanna play with this all the time. And every single time I open it to show you on a video and I look at the color story, I'm just in awe again. And I just want to play with it, make different color combinations. This is such an amazing quality palette. This is 20 pounds. It's a UK indie brand. This palette is insanely good quality. I can't recommend this one enough, but yeah, I reach for this time and time again. Thank you so much for checking out this video guys and thank you so much to Dialect Fragrances for sponsoring the first part of this video. I can't re recommend those fragrances enough. Let me tell you now, I use those fragrances all day every day. I spritz myself two or three times a day. If I come into my beauty room, 
I'll be getting the fragrances out again. I just really enjoy the experience of using them. So yeah, do check those out if that is what you are interested in. Don't forget to use my link that will be in the description box and my code if you want to support my channel. That would be amazing. Let me know what you think to the things that I constantly reach for. Are they products you absolutely hate? Did they work for you? Did they not work for you? Do we have some of the same preferences? Please do let me know. And hopefully guys, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.